السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين We praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala We send blessings and salutations upon Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam His entire household, all his companions We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala To bless them all We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless his entire household, all his companions, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless every single one of us. My brothers and sisters, a beautiful Ramadan, 1437 Hijri 2016, in this beautiful masjid in Bosmont. At the same time, we ask Allah to forgive our sins, to accept from us the taraweeh that we have just fulfilled the first taraweeh. This year, I have entitled the series, Save Yourself. You might want to know where is this from? It is from Surah, Surah At-Tahreem, verse number six, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu ku anfusakum wa ahlikum nara. O you who believe, save yourselves and your family members from the fire. Save yourselves and your family members from the fire. So we would like to know how do we save ourselves? It's extremely important. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has instructed us. He has told us. He has made the verses very clear. He has sent Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to explain to us exactly what he wants. And so we will be looking at how to save ourselves. Every verse we look at, we will be looking at it from the angle of adopting it or learning a lesson from it in the sense that if we do learn that lesson we will be able to save ourselves let's start off from the beginning and we will be moving through the verses that we will be reading through the taraweeh that particular night so the first night as you know we have read one and a quarter parts of the quran and this is from the 30 parts that we have also known as a juza or the juz so you find that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen The opening verses of Surah Al-Fatiha We read it so many times It is the most powerful surah in the Quran It is the most repeated surah in the Quran Where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is starting it off by praise The praise of whom? The praise of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala himself. He says all praise is due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The simple translation is Lord of the worlds. But if you take a deeper look, the term Rabbun means the creator, nourisher, cherisher, sustainer, provider, protector, curer, the one in whose hands lies absolute control of every aspect of existence. That is the term Rabbun. So he who is the Rabb of entire Alameen, what would we be achieving by praising Allah? Why should we be praising Allah upon all conditions? My brothers and sisters, we would be depressed if we did not praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So save yourself from depression, from anxiety, from stress by praising Allah and thanking him. Alhamdulillahi ala kulli hal. The Prophet peace be upon him taught us to thank Allah upon all conditions. This is why it is such an important statement. This is why it is so powerful. Alhamdulillah. All praise is indeed due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The hadith says, Strange are the affairs of a true believer. For indeed, all his affairs are indeed better for him. They are good for him. Everything he does is actually better for him. A believer, all his affairs are good for him. How are all our affairs good for us? When goodness comes in our direction, we are thankful to Allah. And when something negative comes in our direction, we are patient. We bear a lot of patience. So we would thank Allah upon all conditions. It would be good for us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us steadfastness. Similarly, in the same surah, we are taught to save ourselves from being cast into hellfire, from earning the wrath of Allah, from being um, from among those who are astray. Do you know the dua we make in Surah Al-Fatiha? 
We make it after declaring that it is Allah alone we worship and Allah alone we seek help from. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, إِيَّاكَ نَعْبُدُ وَإِيَّاكَ نَسْتَعِينَ You alone we worship. You alone we seek help from. This is the verse of Surah Al-Fatiha. We repeat it thousands, in fact, millions of times in our lives. But do we understand it? It is the prime objective of our existence on earth to worship Allah alone. We know that. And this is why immediately after that we say, Maliki Yawmiddin, owner of the day of judgment. Why owner of the day of judgment? I want to be saved on the day of judgment from the wrath of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, from his punishment. So I worship Allah alone. I call out to Allah alone and I want to be saved because he is the owner of that day. I'm asking him, guide us to the straight path. Oh Allah, guide us to the straight path. My brothers and sisters, if you and I are guided to the straight path, we will indeed be saved on the day of judgment. We will be saved on earth as well from a lot of anxiety, from a lot of stress, from a lot of difficulty, from a lot of hardship. This is why it is an important dua. And it is not good enough for us to say Ihdina Sirat al Mustaqim a million times and we don't search for the path. It's not good enough for us to say, Oh Allah, guide me to the straight path. But we still go to the nightclubs, we still go to the casinos, we still commit adultery, we are still on drugs, we still cannot quit the alcohol that we've been drinking, we still cannot quit the sins and perhaps the pornography that we might be involved in or watching without even quitting it. And then we have the audacity to stand in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and keep telling Him, Oh Allah, guide me. And sometimes we have the audacity to say, Oh Allah, well, you know guidance is in your hands. So if you want to guide me, guide me. Astaghfirullah. That's not how it should work. We should ask clearly for guidance. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, whoever searches for it, whoever wants it, whoever looks for it, Allah will show him the path. And Allah will guide him for that particular path. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala strengthen us. And this is why Allah says, guide us to the straight path, the path of those whom you have favored. Not the path of those who have earned your anger or those who have gone astray. Why does Allah say that? Because those who have gone astray, they were not saved. Those who earned the anger of Allah, they were not saved. As for us, we don't want those paths. We want to be saved. And in order to be saved, we will have to tread the path. It's not an easy path, but it is indeed the path that will lead to Jannah, the path that will lead to paradise. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us all Jannah and paradise. Amen. Then if we take a look at Surah Al-Baqarah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us something very important. Do you know when you have a warning, people warn. For example, today I've got up and I'm warning. Warning about what? About a punishment to come, both in this world as well as the next. That we all know there is the punishment of hellfire. We need to be careful. We need to be worried. We need to be bothered. We need to be concerned. Do you know that this warning if we are from among those who hear it and we couldn't be bothered in that particular case we would enter a category of people who have disbelieved because you hear a warning and you do nothing about it you know there is heaven and hell you know that there is a hereafter but you do absolutely nothing about it what would happen what's the difference between us and those who disbelieve this is why allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says verse number six of surah al-baqarah إن الذين كفروا سواء عليهم أأنذرتهم أم لم تنذرهم لا يؤمنون. Indeed, those who disbelieve, whether you warn them or you don't warn them, they will not believe. They are not interested. They leave it. Whether you say something to them or you don't say it to them, it's equal. It's the same. Sawa'un alayhim. It's equal. Ask ourselves. We are not disbelievers. We believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But sometimes a quality creeps in that is very dangerous for our iman and our belief. What is that quality? When a warning comes in your direction, you don't take heed. It's equal. Whether you were warned or you were not warned, it becomes the same. If that's the case, don't we fall under those whom Allah has described here in this verse? 
We may not be kuffar as such because we have iman, but we are not keeping that iman intact. We are now playing the fool, playing games. This is why we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to guide us. When we continue in those ways and habits that we don't want to take heed, Allah says there comes a time when the hearts will be sealed, the eyes will be closed, the ears will be sealed as well. ختم الله على قلوبهم وعلى سمعهم وعلى أبصارهم غشاوة. Allah sealed their hearts and Allah sealed their ears and Allah سبحانه وتعالى created a barrier between them and this message by blocking their ears. Everything gone. You know when you commit a sin the first time. You feel guilty. If you repeat it the second time without taking heed, you feel less guilty. If you repeat it a third time, you feel even less guilty such that when you repeat it a fourth time, fifth time, you're not worried. Allah says the hearts become hard. And inshallah, we'll see that in a few moments. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then speaks of another quality. We need to save ourselves from hypocrisy. Don't you agree? What is hypocrisy? Those who say we believe, but they're not really believers. Two types of hypocrisy. The first is those who say they are Muslim, but they are not Muslim. Inshallah, there are none amongst us from that group. Those who say we are Muslim, but they are lying to you. They're not Muslim. May Allah protect us. But the second category is what we need to fear. What is it? Those who say they are Muslim, but their lives are led in a way that does not depict that. وَمِنَ النَّاسِ مَنْ يَقُولُ آمَنَّا بِاللَّهِ وَبِالْيَوْمِ الْآخِرِ وَمَا هُمْ بِمُؤْمِنِينَ Verse number 8 of Surah Al-Baqarah where Allah speaks about some of the people they say we are believers but, and we believe in the hereafter but they are not believers. I've already explained both types of hypocrites and I've said that sometimes we are from the second category whereby we say we are mu'min, we say we follow Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, but wallahi our deeds are heading in another direction. Imagine you say you the ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, there's no salah, there's no Quran, there's no ibadah, there's no tilawah. How do you expect to have happiness, contentment? How do you expect to be protected from anxiety and depression and stress? This is what we want to save ourselves from. You really want to save yourself from all of that, you will definitely need to follow the instruction of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He is the one who came with the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Listen to what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says regarding worshipping him. People might ask, why should I worship Allah? So Allah responds, verse number 21 of Surah Al-Baqarah. يا أيها الناس اعبدوا ربكم الذي خلقكم والذين من قبلكم. O people, this address is not just for the believers. O people, worship your Lord who created you and those before you. That is why you should worship Him because He made you. So this is why when we say Rabbun, as I explained earlier, it actually refers to the one who made you, the one who is in absolute control of every aspect of your existence and mine. That is the term Rabbun. So we are saying, Oh Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us, O oh people, worship Allah. Worship your Rabb alone. The one who created you and those before you. Whoever made me, I owe him worship. Whoever made me, whoever I'm going to return to, I owe him the fact that I put the, my head on the ground every day. I will not put it on the ground for anyone besides he who made me. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us and grant us goodness. In order for me to be saved from the difficulties of this world and the next, imagine if every one of us had to do as we desired. Whatever you wanted, you did. If that was the case, we would be stressed. We would be depressed. We would really be suffering. We would be ducking and diving from the police and everybody else. Well, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, be careful. You have an enemy. Just like you and I are worried about thieves and we are worried about people who might come into our homes and break in. 
to those homes to steal our property. We should also be worried about someone who is bigger than just an ordinary thief coming to usurp material wealth. Who is that? Someone known as Iblis, Shaitan. If you take a careful notice, you will come to realize that in Surah Al-Baqarah, verse number 34, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about Iblis and what he did, Shaitan. This is the beginning of the Quran. Allah is already warning you, save yourself. Save yourself from what? The whispers of the devil. He's an evil creature. Allah says, when we instructed him to bow or prostrate to Adam, he refused. Abba was takbar wa kana min al kafirin. He refused and he was arrogant. So don't be arrogant because if you are, you won't be able to save yourself from the clutches of that devil. Remove all pride from your heart and arrogance, haughtiness, become humble. Don't follow the footsteps of the devil. Recognize the devil for indeed he is the one who is going to try and trap you no matter where you are. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us from shaitan. So we all need to promise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we promise ourselves that we will look out for how the devil is trying to affect us. Sometimes it is through jealousy, envy, the qualities of the heart. Sometimes our hearts are blackened or darkened or made murky because of those qualities. And sometimes they are open qualities. A person starts going into habits that are terrible. All this is from the devil. Allah says, protect yourself from the devil. If you want to save yourself from the punishment of the hereafter, as well as from the disaster of this dunya, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes mention of something very, very powerful. When we read these verses, we don't pick up some of these points unless we ponder over them. I'm sure you've heard verse number 40 and 47 of Surah Al-Baqarah tonight where Allah says, Ya Bani Israel, adhkuru ni'mati allati an'amtu alaykum. O children of the Prophet Jacob, who was also known as Israel, may peace be upon him. O children of the Prophet Jacob, remember the favors of Allah upon you. Subhanallah. Why does Allah say this to us? The Quran was revealed for us. The children of Jacob were already gone long before the Quran was revealed. So Allah is saying, O children of Jacob, remember the favors upon you that Allah has bestowed. Subhanallah. This shows us that in order to achieve goodness, in order to protect ourselves from evil, we must be people who show gratitude, who are thankful. Allah has given you so much. We concentrate on the things we don't have. That's why we are depressed. We forget about how much we have, my brothers and sisters. Today we look at the problem we have. I have a cough, for example. I have a sore throat, for example. But guess what? I am walking. I am talking. I am looking. I can smell. I can hear. Mashallah. I am okay. I can feel. I can catch. I can hold. I've earned. I have a family, and so on. We forget about it. We only concentrate because the devil wants us to on matters that happen to seem negative to us. Sometimes Allah takes away things from you and I, my brothers and sisters, because he wants you and I to concentrate on thanking him for what he's given us. And sometimes he takes things away because he knows those things are bad for us. He takes them away from us. We're looking for jobs, all of us looking for better jobs, looking for more money and so on. Hang on. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala warns us by telling us that it is not material, materialistic items that you should be running behind rather you should be running behind the pleasure of Allah if that comes as a result or in the process alhamdulillah we thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but we don't make it our main aim we will be dying one day without anything in our hands may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be pleased with us then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says thereafter regarding acts of worship it's important for us to worship Allah. One might say, what is this salah? The five daily prayers, why? One might say the charities, the alms to the poor, the zakah. Allah says in Surah Al-Baqarah, verse number 43. Establish your prayer. Fulfill your zakah or the charities to the poor and bow with those who are bowing. Do you know why? 
Look what it will do for you. We're only going to mention one or two things. If you pray five times a day, you are showing gratitude to Allah. At the same time, your day is tailor-made. Everything is in order. Get up early, you sleep early, and at the same time, in the middle of the day, you have a prayer, you are thanking Allah, you have a beautiful time through the day. Everything is in order. You are relating the fact that Allah has bestowed upon you so many things to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah gave me the morning. What do I do? So when Dhuhr strikes, I read Salat al Dhuhr to thank Allah for what He just gave me. When Asr strikes, I thank Allah for what He's just given me. And because our entire life is connected to earning in most cases, Allah says, don't forget to give the alms to the poor so that your heart is not stuck to materialism. Imagine if we didn't have to give charities. Why did Allah make some of us poor, some of us rich, some of us filthy rich and some of us extremely poor in order to test us to see whose heart is stuck to wealth. Entry into paradise will never be connected to how much you have. It will be connected to what you did with whatever you had. Remember this. Entry into paradise is connected to what you did with whatever you had. There are people who are filthy rich. Who knows? They may not go to Jannah. And there are some filthy rich. They will use their wealth to go to Jannah by spending it in the right course. And there are some who are very poor. If that makes them disbelieve, they question Allah. Some say, I've been calling out to Allah for years on end. He doesn't respond. I don't want to call out to him again. Guess what? The tunnel was almost complete and you pulled out. So you lost. It's like you almost had a job and suddenly you stopped trying. Had you gone the one more day, you would have perhaps got that job. But you know what? You didn't go. You lost hope in Allah. Allah knows when it's the right time for you to get what he wants to give you. Allah knows that. So my brothers and sisters, let's not fool anyone. We will be only fooling ourselves. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, establish your prayer. Give alms to the poor. Don't be attached to this world. Do you know the general percentage of zakah, the normal percentage of zakah for the general wealth that we have two and a half percent which means for every one hundred dollars two and a half dollars are for Allah not actually for you so Allah says when you have a hundred dollars in your pocket it's actually 97.5 the change is mine give it to me so when you give it to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala you are fulfilling your duty unto Allah if you don't you have robbed from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Thereafter, over and above that, you give extra voluntary charities from your own heart. The zakah is necessary. That's from Allah. It always belonged to Allah. It's not yours. It's like something costed 97 and a half uh, rands, for example, and you have to give the person two and a half rands change. You have to. You can't just say, by the way, it's a hundred. It's okay. Go away. They want that change. Subhanallah. Allah wants that two and a half. So when you give it, you've just fulfilled your duty. Yes, you will be rewarded for fulfilling your duty. But if you want an extra reward, you will need to give much more than just that zakah. Subhanallah. So my brothers and sisters, let's learn to be charitable. Let's learn to give a lot. Let's learn to give. Because giving will indeed save us from hellfire the hadith speaks about bala you know what is bala bala means calamity or tests that allah puts in your path it says as bala, which means charities will actually extinguish the tests that are coming in your direction if you were supposed to have a massive test from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala an accident whereby your bones would be broken, perhaps due to a charity that you have given. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would then make you go through the test in a lighter way, where the accident happened and you just bumped your head on the side. What happened? The charity extinguished the magnitude of that bala. This was from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is part and parcel of taqdeer. It does not negate predestiny because Allah already knew that the charity was going to come through. That's a topic on its own. Perhaps we may discuss it one of the nights. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us ease and understanding. Remember, my beloved brothers and sisters, 
Usually we like to tell our children to do things and we like to tell others to do things. And sometimes if you have an opportunity like mine here, you will tell everyone to do things. MashaAllah. Allah warns us. Allah warns us. Verse number 44 of Surah Al-Baqarah. When you instruct people to do things, don't find yourself going against the very instruction that you have dished out. Imagine with a cigarette. I'm actually puffing away and telling my son, hey, you dare smoke. And he looks at you and says, but dad, no, don't smoke. What is far more effective is for you to say, son, I stopped smoking. I don't smoke. I will never smoke again. And I don't want you to touch a cigarette because, and then you can rattle out whatever you want to in terms of the harms of the cigarettes. What's the point of a person saying, don't ever go and watch bad movies. But dad at night, you're the one who's flicking all these channels and you stop when you see dirty things. The children are sharp. They know. So Allah says, verse number 44. Are you ordering and instructing people to do good while forgetting yourselves? The lesson is for myself and yourselves. Let's try and improve ourselves in a way that we Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is pleased with us and we achieve the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In this way, we would be able to save ourselves from the calamities and difficulties of this world as well as the next. You have children who don't listen to parents anymore. Do you know that? You have children sometimes who instruct their parents what to do. Some of the scholars say when you obey the instructions of Allah without delay, you will find your children obeying your instruction for as long as that instruction is within the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah make it easy for us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us bring up our children and very important dua, those who don't have children yet, may Allah bless you and bestow upon you children. Amen. So my brothers and sisters, Another extremely important point is for us to be patient. Bear a lot of patience. If you want happiness in this world, you need to bear sabr. Without sabr, you will never ever be able to be happy. Sabr is patience, forbearance. Things will happen that you don't like. Someone has to die close to you or you have to die leaving behind people close to you crying. May Allah grant all the marhumin jannah. Just today I got a message a very good friend of mine, his mother passed away suddenly as good as my own mother. What can I do? I'm far away. The best gift to make a dua. May Allah grant her Jannatul Firdaus. Amen. And may Allah grant all the Marhumin Jannatul Firdaus from all our families. And the day we go, may Allah grant us Jannatul Firdaus without reckoning. Bear patience. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says more than once, وَاسْتَعِينُوا بِالصَّبْرِ وَالصَّلَاةِ Verse number 45, as well as 153 of Surah Al-Baqarah. You will hear the words, Seek help through, Seek help through sabr and salah. What does that mean? That means through patience and prayer. You will have difficulties in life. Allah says, we will test you. We will test you. Negative things will happen to you, but they will all be perceived as good and positive through two things. Patience and prayer. Keep on praying to Allah. Keep on bearing patience. Don't lose hope. Never ever lose hope in the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Look at what happened to those who lost hope or to those who did not bear patience. Do you know the children of Ya'qub alayhi salatu wasalam or those who are known as the followers of Musa alayhi salatu wasalam, the people of the book. Allah makes mention of a story in Surah Al-Baqarah in verse number 61. Allah says, وَإِذْ قُلْتُمْ يَا مُوسَىٰ لَن نَصْبِرَ عَلَىٰ طَعَامٍ وَاحِدٍ When you told, meaning the children of Ya'qub, when they told the Prophet Moses, may peace be upon him, that we are not going to bear patience with this one type of food. Listen carefully, it's a very important point. Allah blessed them with man and salwa, the heavenly food, that which came from Jannah, that which came from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They were eating it. But after a while, they got fed up. We're eating the same thing every day. That's what they said. We're eating the same thing every day. So they said, Oh Musa, 
We don't want this food anymore. We're not going to bear patience any longer. We want the various different types of herbs and cucumbers and corn or garlic or various types of lentils and onions. We don't want man and salwa every single day. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that was ingratitude. We gave them something. They didn't want it or they got fed up and sick. How many of us? We don't have as much as the others who have unique exotic dishes every single day to select from. Rather, we just have the pup and vegetable. Mashallah. Thank Allah. Subhanallah. Thank Allah. And keep on having it and thanking Allah even if it means every single day. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in these verses, Thum, Subhanallah, Subhanallah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, أَتَسْتَبْدِلُونَ الَّذِي هُوَ أَدْنَى بِالَّذِي هُوَ خَيْرٍ Are you trying to change that which is better for that which is not even better, that which is okay? You want to change something which is better. Allah has given it to you. He knows it's good for you. I want to pause for a moment. Do you know the people who have high cholesterol, high sugar, high this and high that? Do you know a lot of the times it's those who are wealthy who are eating all the different types of food. You take a look at the poor people who cannot even afford all of that. They eat a basic meal. A lot of them, they are healthy. They work hard, subhanallah. And they don't have all those struggles. This is not a rule, but I'm saying it's an observation. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us an understanding. My brothers and sisters, inshallah, we continue tomorrow. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes mention of something very interesting. I will close with it inshallah. Allah says those people who were not patient with that food that we bestowed upon them, we converted them or we affect, we inflicted upon them humiliation and poverty. Why? Because they did not appreciate the ni'mah and the gifts of Allah upon them. When you don't appreciate what Allah has given you, he takes it away and replaces it with something worse. Remember that. So thank Allah. Even if you have to eat the same thing every day, even if you are leading a life that may not be as high as you wanted it to be, keep on thanking Allah. Who knows? He might take it away from you and replace it with something worse. Look at those across the globe who don't even have what you have, what I have. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us be thankful.